Welcome to Health on the Hill. I'm Mary Agnes Carey. One of the Obama administration's major selling points for the sweeping 2010 health care law was a Congressional Budget Office analysis that the measure would expand coverage for millions of people while reducing the federal deficit over the next decade. But recently, the CBO said it could no longer evaluate the fiscal implications of all of the law's provisions, in part because the administration has made so many changes during implementation. Eric Piannon of the Fiscal Times is with us now to discuss this development. Thanks so much for being here, Eric. My pleasure. As you and I both know from covering the health care law together, the CBO had made this estimate that the law would save something around $120 billion over the next decade. But given this recent announcement, what does this mean for the CBO's ability to analyze these provisions and how much money they'll save? Well, I think you're right. I think the CBO consistently in recent years has, has projected that overall it would have a, uh, a positive impact on the deficit, maybe bring it down by $120 billion over 10 years or so. And when the Republicans made a big push to try to repeal Obamacare, uh, the CBO warned that uh, it could add $210 billion to the deficit. So that was the flip side. Um, but very interestingly, in April, uh, very quietly, in a footnote to uh, a very complicated report, the uh, CBO signaled for the first time that while it could point to areas or programs within the Affordable Care Act that would bring down the deficit long term, they couldn't make a blanket assertion that the law taken together with all of its component parts would have that impact. They backed away. In a sense, they backed down from that, that earlier projection. Eric, there are some parts of the law the CBO can track and others that they can't. Can you explain? Well, I think that's right. I mean, in terms of the uh, uh, insurance coverage and subsidy program to help uh, poor people um, obtain insurance, um, the CBO can track that and has a pretty good handle on its long-term budgetary impact. For other programs like, uh, for example, uh, the employer mandate uh, and a series of other uh, uh, policy initiatives and, and, and segments of the program that have been temporarily put on hold or delayed, um, it's much harder for them to track that. You've been a budget reporter for a long time. Have you ever seen the CBO do this before, come out and basically say, we just can't score some elements? You know, I, I can't recall anything quite like this. And I am kind of surprised by the way they did it so quietly, you know, in terms of a footnote. It wasn't like, you know, uh, a little announcement or maybe a, a separate box in one of their complicated reports say, oh, by the way, um, we can't do this anymore. It was just something that they in a sense, slipped in, my guess feeling that experts who are following this issue very closely, they would immediately pick up on it. But for the rest of us who don't follow it, you know, in an incremental stage, it was kind of a surprise. You mentioned politics a minute ago. What are the political ramifications of this? Well, I think that um, from the uh, Republican standpoint, this is just one more example of, of how, of switch and bait. Uh, in which the administration promised one thing and is delivering something else. I mean, this isn't the administration's estimates. This is the independent Congressional Budget Office doing this. So, I mean, I guess if OMB made a pronouncement like that, it would be even more um, controversial. But um, I, I, I sense that this will be just like one more argument by the Republicans that this is a terribly flawed program that needs to be changed or um, done away with, according to some. Do you think it will be an issue in the midterms or the presidential, or is it simply wouldn't get that kind of legs? It's not clear. I mean, I, I think that in, in maybe in some races, in some venues, it might be brought up as, as another example. And I don't think we've heard the last of it. I'm, I'm sure members of Congress are bombarding you know, Doug Elmendorf, the head of the CBO, with letters demanding explanations. So my guess is we're going to be hearing more about this, uh, in, at least on the Hill or in a, in a budget context. But um, it, it's certainly something that I'm sure the administration is, is, is worried about because it, it was a, a great arguing uh, point for the Affordable Care Act. Maybe this program wasn't working. Maybe we had a terrible rollout. 
But in the end, 10 years from now, this is going to be a good thing for the budget. All right. Thanks so much, Eric Piannon of the Fiscal Times. My pleasure.